Hi everyone, this is Sarah the Healthy Home Economist and I want to show you in this video how to render tallow. Tallow is a word that has almost disappeared from our American vocabulary but we need to bring it back because tallow is one of the healthiest fats that you can cook with in your kitchen and you need to seek it out and find it and if you're like me and have trouble finding it then you need to learn to render it yourself. Tallow is the fat that is around the kidneys of a cow. You can also get suet, which is the same type of fat around the kidneys of a, a sheep. But in this case, I've got actually here a chunk of tallow that is right from the cow. A friend of mine in our buying club gave this to me. She said, I have no idea what to do with this, Sarah. Can you show me? I said, great. I'll take it home. I'll do a video on what to do with it and post it on the blog for everyone to see, not just you, so we, everybody can learn from this. So that's what I'm going to do with this. It's a big chunk of tallow. You can see the kidneys are right in here. It's uh, the, the chunk. There's a big, kidney, uh, big uh, chunk of tissue there. You can see the fat is intertwined with the tissue in this chunk. And a lot of you are probably going, oh, Sarah, I got this, this is making me queasy. I understand that. This is new. Americans need to to kind of get more in touch with their food and, and, and learning to render tallow is one way to get very much in touch with your food. We, we, we're too much used to packages and jars from the store. Everything is sanitized and we need to get away from that. We need to understand where our food comes from. And when you understand where your food comes from, then you understand why tallow is so amazingly healthy. It has a very high smoke point. It's the perfect fat for making homemade french fries. And in fact, McDonald's used to use tallow to make french fries until the animal rights activists got after them and they made that change to very unhealthy, partially hydrogenated oils with MSG added to give that fabulous beef fat flavor that you naturally get when you make french fries in tallow. So I'm going to get a, quite a bit of tallow out of this, several jars full, and um, my next step will be to chop this tallow up and to remove the kidneys. And I, I want to save time in the video, so I'm going to turn the camera off now, chop this up, remove the kidneys, and we'll pick it up at the next step. That big chunk of tallow is now chopped up. You can see here we've got what looks to be one kidney from this cow. And we've cut all the tallow away. It took about 10 minutes to cut as much fat of the tallow away from the kidney as we could. So there was, there's like, obviously there's two kidneys on a cow, so there was another chunk of tallow that went with this, this cow. That whoever split the cow with my friend obviously has in her kitchen if she hasn't done anything with it yet or not. So hopefully if she hadn't done anything with it, she can watch this video and get that done. But now we have the kidney. What in the world are you going to do with the kidney? Well, you can grind it up and hide it in meatloaf. And you can make a, for those of you uh, from the UK watching this video, you can make a wonderful kidney pie with it, a nice traditional dish that many of you growing up may have enjoyed. But for now, we're going to focus back onto the tallow. We have this wonderful tallow here, and the next step is to melt it in the oven. Tallow will melt around 115 degrees Fahrenheit or so, but you want to melt it as quickly as you can without burning it or reaching the smoke point. So I would try 175, 200 degrees, something like that, and you're going to put it in the oven and periodically bring it out of the oven and pour off the tallow through a cheesecloth to strain it. And I'm going to show you how that's done, but for now we're just going to put it in the oven and start the melting process. And I'm going to put it on, let's see, I'll put it on 200, how about that? and we'll leave it for a few minutes and I'll just periodically check it. So therefore, if you're going to do your towel, if you're going to render your towel, it's a good idea to be doing other things in the kitchen that afternoon while you're doing it. Because even though towel is not a very time consuming process in and of itself, it does take a lot of little steps. So if you're doing other things in the kitchen, that's the best way to go. We'll pick this up in a few minutes after some of the towel has melted and I'll show you how to pour it off and store it. The tallow has been rendering in the oven now for about nine hours. I got really busy and wasn't able to deal with it, but that's okay because the temperature was so low, it wasn't going to burn. It was just going to very slowly melt. So you, if you get busy and you can't get to it right away, that's just fine. So let's take a look and see what we have. I think it's completely rendered now. 
so I'm just going to turn off the oven and we'll take out the pan and you can see we have quite a bit of tallow in the pan with the, the tissue surrounding the tallow um, still present and you can take a spoon and press down this tissue and squeeze out more of the fat which is the tallow of course and get that all you know mixed in with the, the tallow that's, that's there. Now the nice thing about doing the towel the way I'm showing you, rather than, I know you can put it, some methods put it in a food processor and chop it into fine bits and heat it on the stove. You can do that too. But the great thing about this way is you don't have to strain it. The tissue is in big chunks. You haven't chopped it up into little bitty pieces. So you don't have little bits of tissue getting mixed in with the fat. So the great thing about this is that I can just take this and take a jar pour it straight into the jar, like so. Now I did get a couple of big chunks in there, but they're very large chunks and they're easy to just scoop out with a slotted spoon. So you can see how beautiful and yellow this towel is. And that's what distinguishes beef tallow from just plain old beef fat. The tallow again is the fat around the kidneys. It's not just any old beef fat on the cow which would not have this beautiful yellow color when you render it. That tallow around the kidneys is extremely high in vitamins A and D and that's why you have this beautiful yellow color. It, almost, it looks really like ghee. If you've seen my how to make ghee video you'll notice that the ghee looks very much like this. So go ahead and just um, get a chunk of tallow if you can. You're going to need to find a local farmer to get a big chunk of tallow intact like I was showing you. Otherwise, if you can't find a local grass-based farmer to get a chunk of tallow from, you're going to have to just go to a local butcher and get plain old beef fat. And you can chop up beef fat into chunks and render it as I've described here in the oven. But if you can go ahead and get that fat around the kidneys, that would be your best bet because not only is it a wonderful fat for cooking with the smoke point being extremely high around 400 to 420 degrees Fahrenheit, but you're going to get all those wonderful fat soluble activators too, which the traditional cultures found really helped with the maintenance of vitality into old age, easy fertility, healthy children, and and the prevention of tooth decay. So that's why we want to get this tallow and not just any old beef fat. I hope you found this video helpful to you and get out there on eatwild.com is a great site to find some local grass-based farmers who can provide you a big chunk of beef tallow. This is Sarah the Healthy Home Economist and I'll see you next time in the kitchen.